Senator Coons. Thank you, Chairman Schatz, uh, Ranking Member Hyde-Smith, um, Vice Chair Collins. Uh, welcome, Secretary Buttigieg. Um, look forward to talking with you this morning. Um, let, let's start, if we can, with rail. Rail's a real concern for my community. We have one of the busiest passenger rail um, stations in America, named for our president, um, but we also have very busy uh, freight rail lines that run up and down the backbone of the East Coast. Um, I appreciate your continued work to implement the bipartisan infrastructure law, which is benefiting the state of every senator. Um, but we have to continue to provide robust funding for DOT programs in order for us to actually achieve um, the vision of the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill. On Amtrak, America's passenger rail system, you're requesting a 20% increase over FY23 enacted levels. Um, in no area of transportation do I think your phrase in your opening statement, decades of disinvestment, is it more real um, than in our rail infrastructure, something that's been tragically highlighted in recent weeks. Um, I will lead the letter endorsing uh, Amtrak's $3.65 billion request to ensure a robust funding of the Northeast Corridor and our national network. Um, and as I've previously raised, Amtrak's funding needs were not addressed by the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. There was a significant and helpful down payment, but the framing assumed steady annual appropriations. Um, this is something I rely on for my transportation to and from work, so it's particularly personal to me. I know for 36 years, uh, our president also commuted by rail, as do millions of others um, across our country. How can we continue to support Amtrak and ensure the Northeast Corridor is a reliable, safe means of transportation? Well, Amtrak is a vitally important economic asset to the entire country, certainly with regard to the Northeast Corridor. And as you mentioned, our president uh, famously is uh, enthusiastic and focused on this, as is the administration. Uh, Amtrak will be growing its workforce and will have to. Uh, in order to uh, be able to make good on the opportunities that are coming uh, by way of the investments uh, and implementing the $22 billion in advance appropriations provided uh, by the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, while, as you noted, uh, requiring more resources for many of the things that I think uh, passengers, customers, and, uh, and communities expect. Uh, I know that uh, uh, they had, uh, at last time we checked in February, uh, nearly 20,000 workers. Uh, they've set a goal to hire almost 4,800 more uh, mm -hmm. in uh, 2023. So whether it's the physical infrastructure side where we as a department are most likely to, and most often partnering with them, uh, whether it's the workforce growth that they need to undertake, uh, or a third area I would point to that's important in terms of the reliability of the system, less on the Northeast Corridor but overall, uh, which is ensuring that the legal requirement of the freight railroads to make way for passengers is met. Uh, I think all of these will continue to need sustained attention, and we welcome opportunities to work with Congress to make sure that the funding and the authorities align. Thank you. Um, Delaware has long been a site of um, significant Amtrak operations, both the Wilmington shops and the Bear shops for repair and maintenance. Um, we have the National Operations Center, um, and DOT recently gave a, a Railroading 101 program grant um, to our State Department of Labor, um, which, it, I'm sorry, the U.S. Department of Labor gave our State uh, Department of Transportation a grant to try and help grow um, future railroading workforce. As um, the ranking member noted, in trucking we have a real challenge, but we also do in railroading in order to take advantage of construction, maintenance, and operations opportunities. Let me also ask you about um, heavy trucks and hydrogen. Um, Senator Cornyn and I are co-sponsors, along with six of our colleagues, uh, bipartisan co-sponsors of the Hydrogen for Trucks Act. Um, it would accelerate the deployment of clean hydrogen to decarbonize heavy-duty transport. Um, fuel cell trucks have all the benefits of diesel-powered trucks, but without the emissions. Um, but in the early stages of deployment of promising um, fuel cell um, technologies, there's, there's going to be a need to lower cost barriers and to provide um, both gathering critical data so that what's manufactured and deployed is um, demonstrably safe and better understood, um, and to provide um, some incentives for early adopters. How's the department thinking about supporting operators interested in adding hydrogen fuel cell trucks to their fleets? Um, and do you think the kind of incentive program that's laid out in my bipartisan bill with Senator Cornyn would be helpful to accelerating adoption of these vehicles? We uh, uh, welcome the work that uh, you and your bipartisan colleagues are doing because it is uh, another piece of the puzzle of uh, having more sustainable transportation for the future. Uh, it's one thing for light duty vehicles, cars we all own, that we have existing on the street available technology uh, that is zero emissions. The story is more complex for buses and I would add, uh, for trucks rather, but I would add buses uh, to that. Uh, and uh, in addition to some of the tools we do have to work with, like the 
uh, charging and fuel infrastructure discretionary grant program we just put out, uh, and the FTA's work on, on the bus side. I uh, would certainly be interested in continuing to partner with you on expanding the availability and the support for hydrogen, uh, because we know uh, as you look at the harder to decarbonize elements of our transportation systems, surface for sure with the trucks and buses, uh, but also as we look ahead to the, the long-term future of aviation and shipping, there's no question that hydrogen will be uh, an important thing to consider. Well, we have a number of critical companies doing cutting edge research and development and deployment in hydrogen. Uh, for transportation and otherwise in Delaware uh, and some great opportunities. I recently had a chance to ride in a heavy-duty truck on I-95 uh, from Newark to Wilmington and was really struck uh, at how far along this technology is. Let me close by um, thanking you for the $270 million investment in FRA safety initiatives that's in the budget um, after the tragic um, derailment in East Palestine. Um, we want to work together with you and with the bipartisan group of my colleagues who are proposing improvements in rail safety, and I want to make sure that we stay um, engaged in this as a Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Senator. Vice Chair Collins. Thank you very much, Mr.